You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never-ending assistance in 5782, 2022. This week's Parsha is Parsha Sra'eh, and I'd like to read to you chapter 12, verses 19 and 20. The Psukim are talking about the idea of bringing karbonis, bringing sacrifices, bringing animals to the base of English, eating them there. And the Pasuk tells us two different Psukim that don't seem to be related, don't seem to be connected, and nevertheless, the Medrash explains that they are very much connected, and there's a very deep lesson in this connection. Pasuk says, Hishamar Lacha, it mentions the fact that when you come to Yishalayim, you're supposed to eat there, your karbanas, the sacrifices, etc. And there's an obligation to give certain tithes, trumas, maestres, to the Levites, to the Kohanim, to the priests, be careful not to forget the Levites. Don't forget the people who are serving you. The Levites are the singers in the Beis HaMikdash. The Kohanim are the priests bring the Korbanis in the, the Beis HaMikdash. All of your life on your land. And as, we, as the Medrashim explained, Allegation to give tzedakah is not just, of course, when the Jewish people are in the land of Israel. It extends beyond that. But there's a special mitzvah to give to the Levites. That obligation is for the times of the Beis HaMikdash. They're included, if they're poor, in the future time, when we're not on our land. But there's an obligation when we come to the Beis HaMikdash temple, give to the Levites. Don't forget the Levites. Don't forget those who need it. Don't forget those who serve Hashem, serve you. Give them their needs. That's the first Pasuk, talking about Tzedakah, Shumas, Maisus. Next Pasuk says something very interesting. Ki Hashem Kasher When Hashem will expand your borders, as He promised you, meaning you're going to come into Eretz Yisrael, you're going to come into the land, and you're going to have now the Holy Land of Israel. Amarta, Interesting. What are we going to say? It's the moment we've all been waiting for. Mashiach has arrived. What are you going to say? Says the Pesach, something that we wouldn't have expected. I'd like to eat meat. Right? Come to a simcha, you got to eat. In simcha el Right? So ordinarily, Chazal, when they say, in simcha el that there's no joy without meat, it usually refers to a basar of Korban, of a sacrifice. But in this case, you're far away, as the Pesach says, you're not near the base of Mikdash, and you want to eat meat without bringing a Korban. So you're allowed to eat meat. So what is this Pesach coming to say? So the, the Medrash says that in the times when the Jewish people were in the wilderness, the only way that it was permitted to eat meat was if you brought a Korban, those sacrifices that also involved eating, you were allowed to eat it. But otherwise, if it, was a, if it was not a carbon, if you just wanted to eat meat, not in that context, it was not permitted. When they came into Eretz Yisrael, however, when it came time for the Jewish people to enter the land of Israel, when Hashem will expand your borders, Jewish people are now living in Eretz Yisrael, and then you can eat meat. That's what the Medrash says. Let's read this first Medrash inside. It's, it's, of course, it needs explanation. Why should it be? Why should it matter? What's this concept like? First we're talking about the Levim, talking about giving them the tithes, talking about Beis HaMikdash, talking about eating sacrifices. Then all of a sudden we're talking about an expansion in Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel, and asking for meat. I want to eat meat. I got to have meat. It's, it's a little bit strange, the, the sequence of the psukim doesn't seem to be connected. In fact, the two psukim, indeed, there's a space between them, there's a samach, which would seem to imply that they're not connected, but the measure connects them. Let's see what the measure says. There are many things that, on one hand, they seem to be forbidden, and on the other hand, they're permitted. As we said, Klaiso was forbidden to eat meat unless they brought a sacrifice. Pesach says, 
you don't bring your carbon to the base of Mikdash, so that's actually talking about sacrificing your knowledge to slaughter an animal for sacrifice outside. But the other parts like Mark Sivshan Vel Pesach Vel Moyed, Lehaviyai. Like you've come on Hashem, like Nemishkan Hashem, Dami Chashiv, Leishu, Dami Shafach, Ben Chas, Yishu, Mikar Ramai. There's an obligation to bring the carbon to, if you want to eat the meat, you have to bring a carbon. That's how it was originally, so to speak, set down. However, but in the our pasuk, so Hakadosh Baruch Hu now says it's mutter. You're allowed to when you get into the land of Israel. You're going to be allowed. Right? You can you can eat the meat of the animal that you're going to eat. You can eat the meat of the You can bring a korban. You can eat the meat of that korban of the sacrifice. When they get into Eretz Yisrael, when they get into the land of Israel, then they're going to be allowed to eat meat, even if they're not bringing a carbon, if they're not bringing a sacrifice. So what is the idea, what is this concept here of, of being in an expanded place and all of a sudden needing to eat meat? What is this concept, what is the teaching of the depth of this concept? And now, there's a, there's a few Midrashim on this passage of Ki Archiv Hashem, that Hashem is expanding. And the Midrashim, from here on, have a single theme. I'm not sure if we're going to read all of them inside. Certainly not enough time to do so. But it would seem like the Midrashim are also not connected. We'll soon see. But two pieces, three pieces later, we, the Midrash comes back to our concept of the meat. Of that you're going to be allowed to eat meat when you get into Eretz Yisrael. And it goes through the concepts that we're about to understand together. So there's clearly a connection between these concepts. So we need to understand what is the connection. Let's see this next piece. Another explanation of the puzzle Ki Archiv. I will rejoice and I will be awesomely happy in your kindness. You saw my difficulties, you saw my challenges. You saw how I was oppressed, how I had troubles. You didn't put me into the hands of my enemies. This is why we bring this Pasuk. You gave my feet a place to stand in a, an, a wide open, an expansive place. Okay? So it speaks about the Tsar, the constricted place, and then it speaks about the expanded place. Rabbon and Amri, same rabbis, they said like this. This Pasuk is talking about Joseph. Yosef at Tzadik, right? He went through all of these trials and travails. He went through the difficult story with his brothers. They sold him to Egypt. He was challenged with Potiphar's wife. They sent him into jail. Went through all of these difficulties. Let's see. Amar Yosef. Yosef said, Master of the world, I want to rejoice because of all the kindness that you did for me. If you would have just saved me from being caught in the clutches of the wife of Potiphar, and you wouldn't have made me a king, I would have been quite happy, I would have been quite joyous. But now I have the kingship. Now I became a leader. Now I have power over people, and I have the ability to help them. Asherah, you said, son, you, you saw my challenges, you saw my pain. So, yes, if you know, if he was oppressed, he was in pain, he was in difficulty. If he didn't, Hashem did not allow him to be captured by the enemy. This is the wife of Potiphar. She tried to ensnare him in her grip. You stood me up. In an expansive way, Shehishli I see al Eretz al Kol Eretz Mitzrayim. You made me to be the king over all of Egypt. You know, and Shemar Yosef was shalat al Aretz, Agum Ashpir lechol Am Aretz, Vivach Yosef, etc. He talked tough with them. It's very interesting. It brings the whole pasuk, the whole concept. He was given dominion over his brothers, right? So the Medrash is clearly saying. In order to get to point C, you have to go through points A and B. In order to get to that point of rejoicing, interestingly, he's already rejoicing at the beginning. Right? He's rejoicing, perhaps we could say, with his dreams. In order to get to the, from A to B to C, you have to pass through all of those points. 
You have to pass through the difficulty, the challenge, and then you get to a place of expansiveness. Mezrish continues and says, it's also talking about the Jewish people, the people of Israel. We. It is speaking of us. The Jewish people say, we also are going to rejoice in the good things that you've done for us. If you would have just paid the Egyptians their due payment, given them the punishment for all the oppression they caused to us, we would have been happy. We're so happy that you also gave us tremendous wealth. You saw our difficulty, you saw our challenge. So before we explain this, talking about Yosef, Medrash here says, it's also talking about the people of Israel. You saw our pain, you saw how we were oppressed. We called out to Hashem our God, God heard us, God answered our prayers. You saw how we were constricted. It's such a difficult time. It was such a bitter life. As we all know from the Haggadah. But you didn't leave me in the clutches of my enemy. This is referring to Pharaoh, the evil Pharaoh. Shem did not allow us to be stuck in the clutches of Pharaoh. You stood me up in an expansive way. Interesting. When do we get expanded? When we come to Eretz Yisrael, when we come to the land of Israel, there's an expansion, expanded borders. Eretz Yisrael is going to, when Mashiach comes, expand through from the Mediterranean all the way past the other side of the Jordan, through the area which is now called Jordan. That's all part of Eretz Yisrael. Up, down. For Ratzda, Yom HaVakem, of of Enigma, there's going to be an, ex- an explosion. There's going to be an expansion. Here too, the Medrash is clearly saying, just like Yosef had to go through difficulties and challenges in order to get to the place of leadership, the place of expansion. The Jewish people also have to go through difficulties and challenges in order to get to the place of expansion. So this point, this concept, seems to have nothing to do with the previous concept which said, talking about a guy who wants to eat meat. He comes to Eretz Yisrael, it's mutter now, permitted to eat meat. What is the connection here? What is the concept here? And how does it connect also to the concept of giving to the Levites, giving to the Levim their tithes, their trumas and maestros? So, in order to understand this, we really need to look at the next section of the Medrash. The next section of the Medrash talks about a story, a very perhaps, perhaps a famous story. A certain great, great person, a wealthy person, his name was Abba Yudin. His name was Abba Yudin. And Abba Yudin, every time the sages would come, I'm sorry, am I saying this name wrong? Let me see, make sure I got this right. Yes, Abba Yudin. Whenever the rabbis would come to collect money for the yeshiva, he would give a tremendous amount of money, he was very rich. His fortunes changed. He became very poor, he only had a small amount of land left. He used to have many, many acres of land. A small piece of property was left. Rabbis came, and Abba Yudin didn't go to shul. He was afraid the rabbis would find him, they would ask him for money, he had nothing to give, he was embarrassed. He was just so embarrassed. His wife says to him, look, why, why are you not going to shul? Why are you not going? And he explains, because the rabbis are there, he's embarrassed, he's not going to be able to give. She says, I have an idea, why don't you take the piece of land that we have left, sell the piece of land, take part of the money, give it to the rabbis. It's a great idea. That's what he did. He took the money. Didn't really have the money, but he gave the money to the rabbis. And the rabbis realized what happened, and they prayed for him. He said, they said that you should become wealthy again. And Abba Yudin, not long after that, in the, piece of, the small piece of land that he had saved for himself, that he didn't sell, he was digging there, and he found a treasure. And this treasure made him even wealthier than he, fabulously wealthy, even more wealthy than he was before. When he came back again, the rabbis came back after he became even more wealthy. He gave them even more, and he said, your blessing came true. 
That's the Medrash. Now, what's the idea? It's based on the Pasuk Kirachiv. There's an expansion. Kirachiv Hashem Lekech Tivucha. Matan Adam Yarchiv. Medrash brings the Pasuk in Mishle. The gift of a person will expand him. Yarchiv Levi Lifnei Gedoyel Miyatchenu. He will stand in front of great people. So Abba Yudin, he lost everything, but except for a little bit, he gave that to the rabbis, and then, wow, explosion of wealth. What is the measure teaching us? How does it connect to our Pasuk? So, in the Pasuk Shad, the Pasuk Yerach Hashem Lekech is talking about asking for me. When you get to Eretz Yisrael, you're in the expanded land of Eretz Yisrael, and you ask for meat. What does that have to do with Abba Yudin's story? So, clearly, the Abba Yudin story is connected to the previous Pasuk, because the previous Pasuk says, make sure to give to the Levim, to the Levites, make sure to give to those who are serving the Jewish people. In this case, the rabbis. The, the rabbis collecting for the yeshiva, collecting so that people can be completely filled with Torah. They can generate that spiritual energy inside of themselves through the Torah. Abba Yudin was giving to them and he lost his money. But what, what's the story here? Like what? Okay, it was a sacrifice, but why did he lose his money? Why did he all of a sudden become even more rich? So this is what I believe the Medrash is coming to teach us, and this is the Pshat in the story with Yosef, it's the Pshat in the story with the Jewish people going through challenges, and ultimately we're waiting for that time when the Jewish people will be the leaders of the world, right? Will be the leaders of the world. Ten Gentiles will grab the four corner garments of each Jew and say, take us with you, for God is with you. So that's going to be an incredible expansion. Yosef had the expansion being the leader over Egypt and over the Jewish people. But how do you get to that place of expansion? The Medrash is very clear. And this is the understanding of these Psukim. The Psukim are saying, look, there's not, it's not just two separate ideas, giving tzedakah, giving charity to those who are poor, giving to the Levite, one who serves, and coming into the land and asking for meat. We need to still understand what is the idea of asking for meat. These are connected concepts. These concepts are teaching, teaching us a very deep idea. You know, one of the things that I mentioned this recently, one of the things that people say when it's about why do people not move to Eretz Yisrael? There's many reasons. People have families. People have parents who are older and need their help. They can't just... It's, it's not easy. It's not an easy thing to pick up and move to Eretz Yisrael. Well, Hashem, many people are. But it's not an easy thing. The idea here is an amazing, amazing idea. That is, in order to get to a place of expansion, and Eretz Yisrael is the place of expansion, the place, Eretz Yisrael, Hashem Elakecha Bo'ed Tamid, Eretz Yisrael, Vadach Hashanah, it's a place where God gives us a special divine providence, a special, He's, he's especially involved in our lives. In order to get to that place, you have to go through A, B, C. In order to get to the place of expansion, in order to get for Yosef to the place of leadership, in order for the, the Jewish people to get to the place of Eretz Yisrael, in order for Abba Yudin to get to a place where he's fabulously wealthy, where he can give as much money as he wants, tons and tons of tzedakah to the rabbis, in order to get through, either you have to pass through this place of constriction. You have to pass through that place. Now, one way of thinking about it, you know, it's not easy to give tzedakah. It's not easy to give charity. It's, it's a hard thing to do, you know? It's my money. I worked hard for this money. I constricted myself in order to be able to get to that place where I would be able to receive this money. I didn't want to work. I didn't want to uh, t put in all the effort that it takes to receive the money that I need to support my family, but... I have no choice. I got to do it, right? And that's one aspect of it. But then for me to take that money that I worked so hard for and give it to somebody else, that's even harder. That's even harder. Think about the Trumas and Mice. This person is, has a field. Think about the farmers this year in Shemitah. What a, what a difficult, what a difficult Nisayan. What a challenge. So you spend six years working your fields. That's your Parnassa for your family. You have loans. You have, you know, your whole land has to lie fallow. How will you make it? How will you live? The money that they give you from the Karen Ashwis is not enough. How are you going to make it? But here's the thing, okay? And this is, it's, it's a little bit deeper. It's a little bit deeper. 
because you start off on a certain level. Abba Yudin is the perfect example. He started, he was rich. He had money. He was giving tzedakah. But he wasn't all the way there. He wasn't fabulously wealthy. Now, one way to get fabulously wealthy is to keep working and ishtadlus and ishtadlus and ishtadlus and that might even work. But the, the Medrash is telling us and the Pesukim are telling us there's another way to get fabulously wealthy. Do you know what that way is? You're rich, you lose it all. And you sacrifice further. When Abba Yudin says, you know, I'm going to take my land and I'm going to sell it so that I can give that money to the Rabbonim. What an incredible sacrifice. I mean, think about it. I have nothing left for myself. What am I leaving for myself? But what a wise wife he had. She saw that there was something inside of him, something inside of his heart that said, no, I have to give this money. I, I, can't, I, I can't look them in the face and not give it to them. So she said to him, do whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes. When you do whatever it takes, when you face off with that challenge and do whatever it takes, that's how you get through to the other side, of ex- which is expansion. person who gives tzedakah to the, to the lady, that's very hard. My hard-earned money, my hard-earned produce, my hard-earned produce, the, money, the produce that I worked so hard to create. Squish it. Squish it. Bring it to a different level. That's what the story of Abba Yudin teaches, and that's the story of Yosef. Yosef said, I am the leader over you guys. Look at this dream, right? And it was true. It was a true dream. And he really was supposed to be the leader without them, you know, without their resistance. But the oppression, the difficulty brought him to a different place. Think about it. He was supposed to be leader over the Jewish people. Where did he end up being the leader? Over Egypt. Over the, the greatest empire of the known world at that time. He became a leader over Egypt and over the Jewish people. So his world was expanded out by going through this very narrow place, this very difficult time. Interesting, it mentions specifically Potiphar's wife. Going through that difficult moment you know, it's hard for me to give the tzedakah. I'm going to give it. And on the other side is expansion. On the other side is the harchava. And in trying to understand the concept of, wow, what now I'm asking for meat. It's a difficult thing to understand. I'm not sure I have my, my uh, grasp on it completely. But perhaps you could talk about it and think about it in this way. Beforehand, when they were in, in, in the Midbar, before they got to Eretz Yisrael, so, the only way to eat meat was in a very specific way, in a very limited way. And when Chazal say in Simcha El Basar, that means that somehow, and I don't know what this means, but on a spiritual level, there's a joy, right? Simcha is an expansion, right? When you, when you smile, your face expands, right? It's, it's a, when you're smiling, you're in a state of expansion. When you're laughing, you're in a, in a different consciousness, an expanded consciousness. Somehow, meat brings us to a place of simcha. But when I say that you can only eat meat in the base of English, that means that there's a limited way that you can experience that joy. I don't want to talk about meat as basar taiva, this meat that I must have. I'm, you know, I, I just I, I love food, so I have to have this food. Let's not think about it that way. Let's think about it, at least at the core essence of what the teaching here is. The meat represents a certain simcha that I have, a spiritual simcha. Now, is that simcha limited to only being possible inside of the Beis HaMikdash? Or can I have that simcha anywhere? Can I talk to Hashem only inside of the shul? Only inside of the synagogue? Can I learn Torah only there? Or can I... Speak to Hashem wherever I am. Can I learn Torah? Wherever I'm going. The idea, the concept here, at its essence is that there's one state. One state of being, which is a state, it's cool, I can have meat. In the Beis HaMikdash, limitation. I get through from one side to the other. I come from the wilderness and I get all the way into Eretz Yisrael. There's a harchava. In order to get to Eretz Yisrael, do you know how many tri- trials and travails, 3,300 years since that time until hopefully soon when we have Mashiach 
and will have that experience of the true expansion, so much difficulty, so much trouble, so many pain, so many painful experiences. But all of that is to bring us to a place of true expansion, just like Yisuf at Sadiq. And just like what happened with Abba Yudin. There's one place that we were at, hey, it would have been really nice, you know, Mashiach would have been, Moshe Rabbeinu would have been Mashiach. We would have come in there, but you know what? The fact that we've gone through all of these thousands of years of history and troubles and, and pain and oppression means that we're going to get to a different place which is so much better, so much more expensive, so much more awesome. That's what we're waiting for and that's what's represented by the concept of, of the basar, of the, of the meat. Somehow this represents this great idea of spiritual expansion. We go from making sure to give to the levy, which means I have to give what I can to the levy from my stuff. I have to suppress my ego. I have to suppress my gut reaction, which is, hey, this is my money. I need to give it to him. Get to the other side of that. What's the next pasuk? You have to go through that samach. You have to go through that space. There's, it's hard to get from one side to the other. Then you find ki archiv Hashem. And the other side of that is indeed expansion. Going through that challenge, going through that difficulty, walking through and saying, you know, this is the right thing to do. This is the right thing to do. I'm going to get to the other side. And I'm going to find expansion. Moving to Eretz Yisrael, I've said it, I'm going to say it again. It's a hard decision. I'm just speaking to somebody who just, the first time in Eretz Yisrael, it's past Shabbos. Unbelievable. He moved with his family from Baltimore, I think it was. And he came to Eretz Yisrael. And I said to him, you know, you're going to go through the ringer. It's going to be a challenge. I'm not wishing it on you, but that's the nature of it. In order to get from that place to this place, in order to get from one type of expansion to a deeper spiritual expansion, you have to pass through the fire. You have to pass through a place of constriction, a place of challenge. Yes, it's true. All the things that people say, yes, it's true. It's, it's, there's challenges in the areas of Parnassah, there's challenges in the areas of our children. But it's possible to get through it. It's possible to get to the other side. And it's the only way to get to the other side, to that point of ki archev Hashem lekecha. So I want to bless you and ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us. And we should be able to be willing to, to recognize and to be willing to face off with the challenges and know that these challenges are for our best. These challenges are what make us into greater people. These challenges are what get us to the other side of true Archava. The way that it was before, you know, we were coasting. But now, Shem should help us find that place of great expansion, of great spiritual wealth. Thank you so much for listening. A wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.